Hi, this is Blake, and this is JASM for ID users. And this is just a general introduction to the differences between JASM and ID and their similarities. So you can see that I have a task square selected in the Hot Tasking Manager, and I actually have the same square checked out in the ID editor, and I also have it checked out in the JASM editor. And so this is what it looks like just after I click on edit with, and then one time I chose ID, and one time I chose JASM. So this is typically what you're used to seeing here in ID, and you get a purple square that indicates the boundaries of that tasking manager square. And in the JASM editor, you get this crosshatch that sort of indicates. So there's no purple square, there's just this crosshatch. The other thing you'll notice is that ID came with Bing imagery right away, and over here in JASM, there's no imagery. So I'm going to go ahead to the imagery menu and I'm just going to load the Bing imagery. Just as a quick introduction here, this set of icons right here, this is mapping tools. These are mapping tools. Very similar to ID where these are the mapping tools that you have access to. Down here, these are toggle switches. They're also just little icons. These are depressed. These are not depressed. And they essentially control the panels that show up over on this side. Um, this is obviously adjustable, so I'm just going to go ahead and make this, drag this over a little bit. We don't need quite all that space just for those. But clicking on any one of these will turn on and off the panels over on the right hand side. You typically have a layers panel, a tags panel, and then a selection panel. And these are also, you can adjust the if you grab between them, you can adjust the space that they take up. Um, you can basically just close them up and open them up, and you can have a number of them. There's all sorts of panels that you have access to in JASM that you do not typically have access to in ID. The other thing you'll quickly notice is that there's no plus and minus to zoom in and out in JASM. Here we have plus and minuses, and there's shortcuts. And in JASM, I'm under, I think, the same shortcuts work. So plus and minus still work via the keyboard. But typically in JASM, you're just using the mouse wheel, which is also something that you can do in ID. I use the mouse wheel a lot. Over here in the ID editor, let's see, we have to zoom in to edit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just create a point just so that you can see that there's presets over here and then if I create a line there's also presets you'll notice it's a different set of presets because these typically go on line features and when I had this selected these typically go on point features um, same thing would be true for areas if I drew an area I would get a set of presets that generally relate to areas JASM has presets. We have a preset menu that you can look at. Don't have to have anything selected to look at them. These are also presets. Same thing that's in the presets menu. They just give you a different way to get to them. Probably the biggest difference in mapping and the simplest one to understand, I don't know, um, but probably the biggest difference in mapping for JASM is that in ID you have these three tools area, line, and point. And in JASM, you basically have one tool. By the way, so like I said, these are mapping tools. Um, these are the two selection items. This one just lets you click on stuff to select it. This one lets you do the lasso to select things. And then this one is the essentially the main mapping tool. There's some other mapping tools, like the buildings tool, but this one is essentially the main mapping tool. And so in ID, you have three different tools, but in JASM, you have one tool that you use three different ways. So, I have the one tool selected, and if I want to draw a line, it's very much like in the ID editor. So, let's see here. Let's find a line to draw. Uh, I'm just going to, let's see, okay, well, we'll just call this a path. So I'm going to start editing, and you can see with JASM you get a little red thing, and it there's a dot. It's actually a square, but that lets me know that it's going to connect my draw. I can start drawing here, and it's not connected to anything. When it gets highlighted, 
to a whole line or a way or it gets highlighted to an individual node that means that whatever I start drawing is going to be connected at that point so I'm just going to draw in this very short path so in the ID editor I would grab the line tool in the JOSM editor I only have one tool so it just matters how I use it so to draw a line I'm going to draw a path right here so I'm just going to click here so it's connected to the existing road and now all I do is I'm just clicking as I go along to sort of make this path follow what looks like a path to me. And now when I'm done, I just double click. I could have just double clicked, but you essentially click twice on the same spot and you're done editing that line, which is very similar to how you do it in ID. Now I don't have any tags on this. If it was tagged, it would have show tags up over here. So I'm just going to come up here to my presets for streets and I'm going to see... I'm looking for path. I don't really see path. Perhaps it's under this one. Path. Again, much like ID, it gives me a whole bunch of options that I generally can't really fill out. So I just say apply preset. And now I, anytime I select this tool, by the way, get very used to using the S key. Watch, when I hit the S key, it toggles between these two selection tools. But get used to using the S key so that you can get your selection tool. And if I click on this, now I see that this is a highway path. So I'm going to draw in a... So we're going to switch back to... Now I'm going to draw in a building, which typically if you were using ID, you would use the area tool for. But in JASM, again, we have one tool. We just use it three different ways. So for the road, I just started. Click, 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 and then double click to finish. I'm going to get that same tool, and this time I essentially do the same thing. Click, 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 and then I just close up the area. That's what makes this an area. I could double click right here, and I would have just drawn away a line. But if I click it on one of the other nodes, the starting node for this particular line, that turns it into an area. And then I'm going to come up here to Presets. I don't have the slightest idea. Definitely not historic places. Man-made building. And I'm going to assign the building tag. Um, again, there's a little bit of a form that I don't know anything to, and so just the very most generic thing is building equals yes, and I'm just going to apply the building tag. S key to get back my selection. Click off. I can square this. Um, in JASM, it's the Q instead of the S, so I'm typing the Q key, square up that building, and that building is drawn. So if I go back over to ID, so we've done line and we've done area and so point which we don't use a ton but over here in the JASM editor I'm gonna put a point right here I'm gonna map that tree so again just one tool and I just single click by the way I'm not holding down it just automatically keeps doing this I don't have to hold and drag or anything like that I just clicked and now I'm drawing a line if I just keep clicking along I'll be drawing a line I want a point. So just like you finished the line before by double clicking on the last spot to finish your line, you just basically click on that same spot again and now I've done a point instead of a line. This is a tree, so I'm going to go up to presets and I'm going to say search. I'm going to type in tree. So this is the tree, so geography natural tree. Again, a little bit of a form to fill out. I don't really know. I just know it's a tree. So this just gets the natural equals tree tag. I use the escape key a lot to make sure that there's nothing selected. I hit my S key to do my selections. Yeah, you can see this has several tags on it. So typically what you see here is what you would see if I clicked on... Um, let's, I'm never really quite sure how to do this. Um, but if I somehow clicked on this road you can see over on the left hand side all of the things that could be put on that road. Um, yeah, that's not what I wanted to do. So there, I can click on that road and I can see all of the sort of preset options that I could apply to that road. Over here in JASM, you don't really get that unless you were using one of the presets. The other thing that's kind of interesting about JASM. So let's just, I'm going to do a little bit bigger area here just one more time. So again, one tool, if I click, click, double click, I draw a line, which could then turn into a road. If I click, click, 
click actually let's just go ahead and draw an actual area so I'm using the backspace key by the way that just deletes stuff that you're typing and then I'm gonna hit the escape key so I'm just gonna go ahead and draw in this is a little residential area so I'm just clicking to outline this residential area and again if I double clicked right here I would just have drawn a line that doesn't correspond to anything but if I click on the first node it automatically stops the mapping and turns it into an area and then I would go up to presets and say search and I would type in residential area and then I would select this from my presets again I don't have a name so I just apply the preset escape key deselects it S key gets me back to my pointer and I just drew in an area land use equals residential the other thing that's a little bit different about the JOSM editor that you may or may not be used to is this layers this is the thing so you might have seen in ID if we look in the ID editor you can click on the background settings and you could choose different background layers mm, I guess there isn't one of those open street map yeah so you could pick different background layers over here and then you kind of close that up and you can only have one selected at a time essentially and then you would close that back up in JOSM we just have this we always have this layers panel open so I have the Bing aerial imagery out in my layers panel I can come to imagery and I could choose map box close up that little warning and now you can see I have the map box thing imagery and these little this little dot right here these are actually supposed to be eyes that you can turn on and off so now I'm turning off the map box layer and that's turning it back on they're also you can move them so that whoops I'm sorry it's not going very well huh you can move them let's just use the arrows so you could different you know change the order and then this one up here you can see this one has the open street map symbol on it that's because this is a data layer and this is where the actual mapping exists if I turn this off then I don't see any mapping anymore because that's where the open street map data is this is actually really handy to be able to have multiple layers and just quickly turn them on and off you can also select the layer and fade it in and out so you can use it for all kinds of different things if you're depending on the type of mapping you're doing tags and membership this is just what happens if I go back to my data layer and I select one of these things you know this tells me what tags are on it and then the selection panel just tells me what I have selected so I have a way selected it just happens to be closed that makes it an area and it consists of 54 nodes that's a really brief introduction to the differences between differences and similarities between the ID editor and the JOSM editor thanks very much bye bye